Welcome to the Keyforge Premier League. This is Jupiter from Manlius, New York, and I'm here to remind you that we have an event coming up, the Fall Mass Mutation Madness 2 Deck Survival on November 7th, 11 a.m. $10 entry fee, cash prizes uh, to the top eight. 80% of the pool is going back out in cash prizes. 20% is coming to league maintenance and stuff like that. And then uh, we also will have a raffle for 20 lux Luxurious Playstyle Dark Amber Tokens um, that, that were gifted to us by Matty Casper over at LP. So, um... Big event coming. I know uh, we we have a couple of people that have already signed up, and I know more will come. But uh, keep that in mind. Two deck mass, uh, two deck uh, survival, which uh, goes well with the Halloween theme of murder, right? So we're gonna basically have decks that are just killing each other and doing these things. But today we are getting into a game here in round three with PV from Greece and uh, Anxious Pirate from. Australia, and they are basically going to be going heads up and heads at. So with that said, let's get into the game. Let's take a look at their decks real quick. Um, so uh, Anxious Pilot is playing Tamarack of Mage, uh, Cest Cester, whatever, Cester, I can't even say the word. Um, so let me hide myself here and hide this fire, and we'll take a look at this uh this deck list. This deck is actually a deck that I'm a big fan of. Um, it used to belong to Philip McKay, um, and now it is with Anxious Pilot, Pirate, which makes me very jealous. Um, this is a cool deck that plays just a high quality um, AOA style game where um, you're getting max value off of these Chota Hazaris and basically getting punctuated equilibrium running through here, doing good things. The uh, Shadows Suite is outstanding with two Miasmas, three Ronnie Risk Clocks. Um, you know, just lots of good value there. Scally Caper is a quiet all-star treasure map to get that burst out in the beginning. Um, this deck goes pretty fast for what it is, and it can make keys out of nowhere. So that's awesome. And then you look at the disc suite, and the disc suite has um, lots of control. It has the unlock gateway, has pain re reactions, has Tesmal hysteria. So there's, like, ways for him to uh, really take maximum... Um, take maximum value off of the untamed suite which is the engine of the the deck so um i guess the full moon and stuff is going to come into play here too as well as the dusk witch if it gets to stay but usually witches get stitches and they go away so that's tamarack um the other deck that we're going to see today is she who tampers with harmony um this is a deck we've seen before um double nature's call again getting value off of the plays with flaxia and taliga giant nobile for artifact control this deck has a ton of artifact control um in in, in the in the form of that uh giant nussball nussball the not bill and the rust knotter um, they do a lot of good work to uh, keep uh, artifacts off the board, but you also have the Tachyon Pulse and Star Alliance. Um, won't be a big factor in this game, I don't think, but um, they do. it does just play, a, again, a very solid Star Alliance set. And then the Saurians just go wide and, and, and lots of board spot board control with the Failing Strike. The uh, only issue with that is that you basically have to have somewhat of a board state set up to get good value off of those Failing Strikes, but... Uh, the Saurians are big enough with enough protection to uh, probably get that off. So um, going into this game, I'm going to say I'm going to tip my hat towards Tamarack. I think Tamarack is, is equipped well for this matchup. And um, that's the deck that I think that we'll see be more dominant than, than not. So with that said, I'm going to give these guys the go. And uh, we're going to get into this right away in ASAP. So let's do it. Cut the music off. All right, so here we go with the first round of play. So PV is going first. He has won the coin flip, and basically we have a Flaxia right out the gate for two for two Amber, and then we have Pampaka Anga um, and a Dusk Witch. So he's challenging him with the Dusk Witch right off the bat, saying, "If you don't have an answer for this." I'm going to start to do some evil things, and we'll see. Um, we see that in hand, there's really not a lot of answers other than to bounce the Dusk Witch with the Nature's Call, and he's going to get a full value off of that Flaxia as it goes back to hand with those two creatures and kind of resets the board and goes back to the turn one play, and he's at six Amber on turn two to Anxious Pirates Amber on turn four. Um, we're going to see where Anxious Pilot decides to go with this. He's going into Shadows where the, the Risk Clocks, the first Ronnie Risk Clocks is going to come down and do his damage. And then we're going to see the Yahtzee game come into play and a Miasma. 
um, to basically cycle through cars and get himself to six. So six to five, Amber going into turn three. This this uh, the, this game is going fast and furious like I had anticipated it to. So now we see that we have uh, Molina hit the ground with with a Kakar and a what is that uh, Chen Commander Chen and a stealth mode a stealth uh, stealthster. So now the response is make a key and we're going to play go into Deece. We're going to play our Tesmal. We're going to play our Lash of Broken Dreams. And then we're going to end turn with an unlocked gateway to clear the board. And again, we're at zero to five Amber. So PV is going to respond now with bringing in the Gargantodon, which is really good against the Steel. But the Scally Caper might have something to say about that Gargantodon. And... Uh, we see a favor of Rex come into play to get him to six so he can at least threaten to make a key. Um, so now we see the Anga, Papaka Anga. We see the Chota Hazri come into play. Now we see the Punctuated Equilibrium, which is going to reshuffle the hands um, and try to get himself into a position to get better. Didn't get lucky to, in, enough to uh, stop the key for PV. So PV is going to tie up the key here at one to one with uh, six amber. So we're, we're at the zero zero with one, amber, with one key each. And the board states are looking solid. So we move into PV's turn. PV decides to go into Star Alliance. In Star Alliance, he's going to make value off of that Medic Ingram and that Tachyon Pulse to get rid of the uh, Lash of Broken Dreams. And he's going to put Stealth Mode onto um, his opponent. His opponent, uh, Anxious Pirate, is going to look to retaliate. He did take Sucker Punch and Miasma off the board for him this turn and a Nerve Blast. So it almost nullified his turn. Um, by getting putting that down. So instead, he's going to opt to do some board stuff here on the uh, Gargantodon, as the Gargantodon is a huge threat. Um, so he's taking some time off to deal with the things, the thing he could deal with since everything else was turned off. And that actually is going to help empower his shadows next turn. So we move forward, and PV is now into turn six, and PV is playing into Sorian again and he's bringing out the auxiliary to get some uh, pr more protection on the uh, on the medic Ingram and he is going to play failing strike to get rid of the board for his, from his opponent so that would be pretty much most of his turn right there it'll be interesting to see does he keep the other failing strike and hold on to it Yes, he does. So he's going to let that chain him a little bit just to give him more versatility in answering the board. So now we're going to see Anxious Pirate answer this this play um, with some shadows since he took the time to uh, set this up to get better value off of these steals and get rid of that Gargantodon. And now the Miasma. So we're up to four Amber to two Amber and heading back to PV's turn for round seven. So this is 7B, turn 7B. All right, so we see the Taliga again make herself known, and uh, she is embedded with a wild spirit. The cauldron boil in hand is probably going to be discarded as it would do more damage to him than his opponent, and he passes turn at three amber. Anxious pilot takes into his turn, turn eight A, um, and he is going to start it with a banish, and he's going to banish the Taliga um, to get rid of it to the archive, which I don't, I'm not sure. I guess that works. But Taliga will be back again to plague plague the board soon. So there's a Shuler to grab an extra Amber and push his Amber count to 7. And Tamarack is doing all the bullying that it, I expected of it. It's one of the best AOA decks in the world, in my opinion. I really love it. We see the Not Finished With You right now as well. As he uh, reloads some cards. He reloads his shadow stuff and a dusk witch so scally caper ronnie wrist clocks and a dusk witch back into the into the draw pile and he does draw the scally caper so he hit one of the three cards he put back in to the actually because he hit the ronnie wrist clocks too so um here comes pv and he is in star alliance as he builds he's still at four has two amber captured does have a award on the Medic Ingram, and he passes back to Anxious Pilot, who is now going to come out and play a Hideaway Hole. And the Hideaway Hole is going to be followed up by a Ronnie Wrist Clocks, which shows like a, shows its power as it pushes him back to seven. 
and uh, he continues to put just an ungodly amount of pressure onto his opponent with uh, with his with his power with his uh, power level. And next turn we see a full moon turn starting to build. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he decides to go ahead and make an easy one of it, or if he's going to hold off on that a little bit. But his full moon turn would net him a total of three amber and two extra creatures on the board and draw four. So it's not a bad a bad line, but. We go back and see what PV is doing. And PV's turn, he has selected Saurian. So he's now doing some maintenance here with the Scally Caper in play. He has, he knows that he has to be careful. So there's the he's going to basically use the Failing Strike to kill the Scally Caper and the Shoulder. So strong play there, and uh, captured a bunch of Amber, but not enough to stop. Uh, not enough to stop his opponent from making his second key. So now Anxious Pilot is up two to one in key count, um, three Amber already and four. And he did clean out and go for the full moon turn just to get the value. And he's back up to three Amber while PV still sits at four and has four Amber captured on his side of the board, which is uh, kind of scary and can easily get pushed back now to the Amber pool for Anxious Pilot to kind of put this game out of reach. So we'll see how it goes. So PV's turn 10 is now in, in line. This is 10B. Um, we see that he goes Axiom of Gris to clear the board, and now he's going to try to get his his uh, Amber count up to make his second key and put some pressure on the, on the board state. So I expect to see the Brutodon and the Legolas Raptor come out so that he can just draw more cards and have a bigger board presence. So this is kind of getting scary now, and uh, it's, it's kind of tightening up the race. So it'll be interesting here to see if uh, how he's going to go about getting getting to things. So he pushes himself to six right here. So now he's basically telling PV he has to find an answer. Does PV have that answer? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, he has the Fran. So the Fran is an answer. So the Fran is an answer, um, but that's the only answer he really has is to play that Fran and get the value off that Fran. So we will see a Star Alliance turn and we will uh, see him survive for at least one more turn there. And he pushes himself to seven, so he does put himself in check. But he does need to capture that amber, which is not in a good spot here as far as for what is about to come, because we do see the regrowth, and there is the Choda Hazri in the uh, in the discard pile. So this game is most likely over here on Anxious Pilot's turn, as he is going to song spring or uh, life. Sp oh no, he doesn't go for it. Instead, he chooses to go with the shadows play. And pain reduction. Okay, so he's just clearing everything out. He could have, I think he could have won there with the Toyota Hazri play, but instead he's just pumping his amber up and not, and leaving himself open to that. And now he flips his discard pile, which uh, is unfortunate. I think that was a misplay on Anxious Pilot's part. I think he could have won the game right there, and instead he decided to rack up the amber. I think he's still going to get out of this okay, but. Uh, Interesting. So PV concedes. So they have 71 minutes. Moving forward from this point, and we will see what happens as they go on to make the next game. Uh, let me bring back the uh, survival message. Um, Basically, uh, fall mass mutations madness, two deck survival, right there. Okay, I'm I, I got you, buddy. Harlan wants to say hi. Say say hi. Can you say hi? You smell stinky. So right after this, I guess I'm gonna have a poopy diaper to clean. So he wants me to turn on watch videos, so that he can watch videos on PBS Kids. Can you say hi? Say hi. Say hi. Can you say hello? Um, give me that. Harlan doing his cute thing and being messy at the same time. I don't know where that went. There it is. All 
All right. So, that said, let's get into the next game. Kids, the things they do. And we will uh, go ahead and hide ourselves again as we move into the next game. Uh, let's see. Boop, boop. All right, so hopefully PV gets to go first. That is the uh, the chase here, right? Let me see if we go. Hey, first time shot. So now we have a flip of decks as Tamarack goes to PV and Anxious Pilot gets to pilot the uh, She Who Tampers with Harmony. So let's see what happens. Um, as we start game two here, game two starts, it's, and we have, uh, basically 72 minutes still. So the first game went by flying like we had expected. So PV gets to go first in this game and he comes out with Tezmal. So he comes right out to the board and says, here's a threat. Um, you want to deal with it and we'll see what happens. So we're going to see a big, uh, we're going to see a big, Untamed turn here as he's going to use the Mermook to deal with the Tesma, I'm certain, and uh, get some presence to the board. And all of them are bigger because of the Pampaka Aga. So strong opening turn, and he draws into a really heavy uh, Star Alliance hand as well. So this is a very good start for Anxious Pirate here. And then we have PV on the other side, kind of 2-2-2 two, two, two locked uh, with cards. This is like a, a common thing in Keyforge that sometimes you get into these f funks where your deck is just giving you two cards at a time. It doesn't let you go as fast as you might like to. And uh, it can sometimes be very detrimental, especially when you do that and you draw back into a 2-2-2. Two, 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 and like you can kind of get stuck in that pattern. And that's the RNG of the game. Sometimes it's just bad against you. And th in this case, uh, it is unfortunate, but uh, it looks like PV might be getting strapped onto that early and uh, we'll see how he comes out of it, especially holding two miasmas. That's uh, not a very ideal place for him to be at this point. But uh, we do see that uh, the Star Alliance crew is coming out to uh, start to put that pressure on that is uh, indicative of winning this game. So we see Flaxia and Nature's Call. That could be a real heavy hit to, uh, to the board right now. So there's the Banish. The Banish is going to do some work and help a little bit, but not a lot because, okay, so he does, he banishes away a Star Alliance card, which is a much better choice because if he had hit that uh, Flaxia just to get it off the board, it would have been, a, it would have been a bad thing. Or that Taliga, it would have been a bad thing, but instead he's using the uh, Unlocked Gateway to kill everything. Is that what he did? I, I missed the, uh, oh, Pain Reaction. Yeah. So we're into turn three on Anxious Pilot's turn, and you see him up to seven Amber already and pushing. And uh, the Miasmas will slow down the game a little bit, but not too much. And uh, it'll be interesting to see um, how PV draws to get out of this. Because now he's kind of stuck playing Shadows, and the Shadows doesn't really have that big of a break for him. So he's really relying on the idea that he's going to be... A, he plays both Miasmas because he realizes he needs to dig. And his dig was not overly great so um this is looking looking bad there's a gargantodon to really lock this game in like he, that's going to be probably the the thing that tips this game completely in his favor and is going to allow him to uh stop pv from doing the things he wants to do so he's going to concede this key and he's going to try to populate the board here and then it's going to get ripped back I, I, it's going to get ripped back with the Phalanx Strikes and the Brutodon Auxiliaron, and he's going to basically create more Amber here and just keep pressure. It's like all he needs to do right now. He's in, he's driving hard. I think this race is on, and I think it's going to be interesting. Okay, so he's going to stop the key with the uh, Star Alliance turn, but he also has the Stealth Mode, which is huge to uh, keep him from playing any um, spells. So absolutely gross and here comes the dusk witch which is going to uh, pr present a problem that uh, has to be dealt with but it's going to be easily dealt with either by the nature's call this turn or the um phalanx strike so that's just it's not as good as it looks there's the chota hazari so we know that there's going to be a, a chance for him to make a key at least off of this but the uh, gargantodon is in play to really slow down those uh nerve blasts and ronnie wrist locks
Harlan, don't throw the phone. Why are you throwing the phone? Go get the wipes. Go wipe it. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Right there, on the floor. On the floor. On the floor. So we see PV thinking about the Shadow's turn. The Shadow's turn is not going to be as good as he hoped because the Gargantodon is there to make him uh, make use out of this. But he's up. He's down two to one. And uh, he's got to make the best of what he can make the best out of. And he, he's, he has that Chota still. And he's, I think he's trying to position himself into a place where maybe that Chota can be a, a, a two for one turn for keys. But uh, most likely not going to be how this ends. Anxious Pilot now gets to play his Nature's Call turn or his Failing Strikes turn. So like it'll be interesting to see which way he goes. He's going by route of Untamed. So we're going to see like uh, an interesting amount of uh, lockdown here. And uh, the Aflaxia is going to do work as it is going to get bounced for sure and put back in. And those Tantalions will disappear as well. And here comes the Flaxia to get to eight. And this game could be over, folks. Let's see. Does he have a way out? He does have a Ryan Wrist Clocks. So he could take two there and he can f action the uh, Yancey Gang. But he is basically trapped in shadows for the rest of this game until um, until the end. So that's not a good, good spot to be. And as soon as he shows that he has to go into shadows and do that stuff, I, I'm pretty sure that Anxious just pushes next turn. And unless he keeps drawing shadows answers, like he's going to be out of luck with that. And he's effectively neutralized the Dusk Witch here, so like uh, by bouncing it to the hand, because he won't have a chance to play it again, which is, is pretty huge. But that uh, Gargantodon has just done work to uh, protect the board state and make things good for him. As far as like putting the Amber back on the place, and now the Phalanx Strikes just comes in and just destroys the whole board. So. I'm very certain that this game is over right here. Here comes the Phalanx Strike. Here comes the uh, Brutodon Axodon. Here comes the Ludo. Like, game over. Dinosaurs win. It's pretty much what I see. There's the Centurion. And there's the Phalanx Strike. It's going to put it put a whole bunch of damage onto the Tandalion. But, oh wait, he only had, he only had 10 damage. Uh, and, oh, there we go. Okay, he got it. Never mind. I'm gonna say I thought for a minute he was uh, off by one. That would have been a little bit different, but that should be a good game. Good game, well played. But uh, you saw there was basically a nuts hand drawn there by uh, anxious pilot, and uh, PV got kind of stuck into his a bad rhythm, and his deck was drawing two by two, which is uh, always a downside, like a bad thing. So. With that said, uh, this is Jupiter from Manlius, New York, and I'm out. So take care and be good to each other and keep forging keys.